you. It's about our veterans. It's about our health care. It's about our pensions. And it's about how, what kind of life we have and what kind of country we're going to have. So I submit to you, I'm not trying to tell you how to vote. I submit to you, young upward person is standing up for you and will stand up for you. And I want you to get on your feet and welcome the person that's going to be the next congressman from the ninth congressional Keeps 
mistaken that we just don't have the money. Don't buy that. You know, when they filed bankruptcy out of the natural resources, they made that claim too. They made that claim that they just didn't have the money to pay for the health care of the, I think it was 4,400 workers under their care. That's what they said to the judge. I'm sorry, we'd do it if we could, but we just don't have the money. Just like Vincent Cole almost 30 years ago said. But in that same bankruptcy filing, somehow they asked the judge for up to $17 million to pay about a dozen and a half senior executives because they were working so hard under difficult circumstances. <laughs> Alpha had the money, just like the U.S. Treasury has the money. We'll have the money to invest in our schools and to bring our schools up. We'll have our money to do the coal fields expressway and the broadband that we need. We'll have the money to give it to the super rich. It's not complicated. The reason you give tax breaks to working people and middle class people and small businesses and family farmers, yeah, it's partly because we need it to get by. But it's also because we turn around and spend it in our local economy, which is what creates jobs. When you give money to people that are sitting on $2 trillion, they're not inclined to turn around and spend it in the local community. They want to find some other offshore haven to stash still more money. So please don't buy that argument that we don't have the money. It's a matter of priorities and who we put our trust in. And as a small farmer, as a guy who's been a working guy my whole life, I put my trust in you, not the rich and the powerful. And I'm going to Congress for just really one reason, because I'm fed up with the rich and powerful having all the allies, having all the friends, and I want working people to have an ally and a friend. And that's exactly what I intend to be for coal miners, for your pension, to make sure that the coal companies are not able to back out of the Black Loan Trust Fund like they want to do, to make sure that the pension is once and for all resolved and so the 70-year-old promise is kept, and to make sure that investment comes into Buchanan and Dickinson and Wise and Russell and all of our counties so that we can also create new jobs, new business, and new industry for the children of the coal miners, for the children of everybody here in this room. We can do that. We can do that. And we can win this thing. We really can. I'm going to wrap up here in a minute and just tell you that right now, I couldn't be prouder of all of you in the campaign we've run. The same way that Cecil talked about how it was you, the UMWA rank and file, that made sure that they had a victory on health care. It's been true for me in this campaign that throughout all 22 counties, we have hundreds of people working on our behalf in this campaign. This is a people-centered, people-focused, people-funded campaign. We passed the one billion dark, one billion dollar mark in fundraising. If you know not a penny of it comes from corporations. 80% of it comes from average people in the 9th District of Virginia. Nobody outside of the 9th District thought that was possible. Nobody outside of the <coughs> Yeah, mobs. You know what I remember when, when they've been talking about Democrats would bring violence and these angry moms? Like, like Vern said, don't see this as an angry mob. But you know what I really remember? It's when one of the many days that I was on the picket lines in Russell County at the prep plant, I told this story a few weeks ago. It's one I hadn't thought of for a while. And I don't remember where it was at the strike, but it had been going on for many months and people's, people were running out of money, people's tempers were kind of frayed, people were getting fed up. And there was a young woman maybe 25 years old, who was just, from me to you, standing there looking for her dad. She was trying to push through the line. Of course, there was scores and scores of miners sitting there blocking the trucks to get into the plant, get out of the plant. And a state trooper grabbed her arm 
And she yanked away from us, just instinctively. And within three or four seconds, four state troopers had tackled this young woman to the ground. And at that moment, several hundred, probably some of you in this crowd, several hundred miners stood up from where they'd been sitting. And I thought, this many, many months of active, nonviolent civil disobedience is about to come to an end. But Marty Hudson jumped up on the back of a pickup truck, grabbed a bullhorn and said, hold your ground. Our fight is not with the state troopers, it's with pits and coal. And he just repeated that a few times. And in spite of seeing this young woman tackled to the ground, violence did not break out. Now you tell me, if we were all about angry mobs and violence, something would have happened there back in 1989. It didn't happen because people like you are committed to the right thing and the right way of getting to the right thing. That's what I plan to do as a congressman. That's why I need your help getting there. Together, we'll disprove this nonsense about mob, mob, mob violence and we'll show that if you just put working people in a position of power to represent other working people, good things can happen. with this wonderful turnout. Again, I implore you just for just for about 40, 48 more hours. I don't know if Vernon has a plan, but I know we're hoping to get some folks out at the precincts at the polls. That's an important thing. Some people walk into the voting booth still haven't made up their minds. And some of you all are out there handing out literature, letting them know that I've been endorsed by the UMWA, letting them know a little bit more about me. We'll get a few more votes. So I hope you'll work today, tomorrow, and some of you Work the polls if you can. Remember always that the, we've, been, we've been sold a lot of lies in this country for a good 40 years. And what I want to say to you is don't ever lose sight of the fact that the economy is not for Wall Street and the, and the executives of the coal companies are the Wall Street banks. It's for us. And politics is not for those same people and their rich donors and their lobbyists. Politics is for us. It's the political process that says that every American should have the same right to influence who gets elected and the same right to influence the rules of the game, the policies that are adopted. That's our right. We now have to take it back from the people who are trying to take it away from us. And I will do that if you help me get this. Thank you all.